read to you chapter six from The Untethered Soul. It's a very moving book for me. I read this particular chapter, chapter number six, pretty much every other day. I've got it on audio, so it's very easy to sort of listen to it before I go to bed. And I just find it so remarkably um, life-changing. And I hope, I'm just going to organize my little camera here, and hoping that it actually can maybe profoundly affect you guys too in some really cool way. So, uh, chapter six of The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. and. This particular chapter is called The Secrets of the Spiritual Heart. Very few people understand the heart, and in truth, your heart is one of the very few masterpieces of creation. It is a phenomenal instrument. It has a potential to create vibrations and harmonies that are far beyond the beauty of pianos, strings, or flutes. You can hear an instrument, but you feel your heart. And if you think you can feel an instrument, it's only because it touched your heart. Your heart is an instrument made of extremely subtle energy that very few people come to appreciate. In most human beings, the heart does its work unattended. And even though its behavior governs the course of our lives, it is not understood. If at any given point in our time the heart happens to open, we fall in love. If at any point in time it happens to close, the love stops. If the heart happens to hurt, we get angry. And if we stop feeling it altogether, we get empty. All of these different things happen because the heart goes through changes and these energy shifts and variations that take place in the heart run your life. If you're so identified with them that you end up using the words I and me when you refer to what's going on in your heart. But in truth, you are not your heart. You are the experiencer of your heart. The heart is actually very simple to understand. It is an energy center or a chakra it is one of the most beautiful and powerful energy centers and one that affects our daily lives. And as we have seen, an energy center is an area within your being through which your energy focuses, distributes, and flows. And this energy flow has been referred to as Shakti, Spirit, and Chi. And it plays an intricate part of your life. If you feel the heart's energy all the time, think about what it's like to feel the love in your heart. Think about what it's like to feel inspiration and enthusiasm pour from your heart. Think about what it's like to feel energy well up in your heart, making you feel confident and strong. All of this happens because the heart is an energy center. The heart controls the energy flow by opening and closing, and that means that the heart, like a valve, can either allow the flow of energy to pass through it, or it can restrict the flow of the energy from passing through. And if you observe your heart, you know very well what it feels like when it's open and what it feels like when it's closed. And in fact, the state of your heart changes quite regularly. You can be experiencing great feelings of love while in the presence of someone until they say something that you don't like, and then your heart closes towards them and you simply don't feel the love anymore. We have all experienced this, but what exactly is causing it? Since we all have to experience the heart, we might as well understand what's going on in there. We begin this analysis by asking a fundamental question. What is it about the structure of the heart center that permits it to close? What you will find is that the heart closes because it becomes blocked by stored, unfinished energy patterns from your past. You need only examine your everyday experiences to understand this. As events take place in this world, they come in through your senses and have an impact on your inner state of being. The experience of these events may bring up some fear, some anxiety, or maybe some love. Different experiences happen inside because of how you take in and digest the world as it passes through you. When you take in the world through your senses, it is actually energy that is coming up into your being. Form itself does not come into your mind or heart. Form stays outside but it is your processed by your senses into the energy patterns that your mind and heart can receive and experience. Science explains the sensory process to us. Your eyes are not really windows through which you look out into the world. Your eyes are cameras that send electronic images of the world into you. This is true of all of your senses. They sense the world, convert the information, transmit the data through electrical nerve impulses, and then the impressions get rendered in your mind. Your senses are indeed electronic sensing devices. 
But if the energy patterns that are coming into your psyche create disturbance, you'll resist them and you will not allow them to pass through you. When you do this, the energy patterns actually get blocked within you. And this is very important. To better understand what it's like to have these energies stored within you, let's first examine what it would be like if nothing was stored. What if everything just passed right through you? For example, when you're driving down a highway, you probably pass thousands of trees, and they don't leave impressions on you. They're gone as soon as they're perceived. And while you're driving, you see trees, you see buildings, you see cars, and none of these make lasting impressions on you. There's just a momentary impression that allows you to see them. Though they do come in through the senses and make impressions upon your mind, as quickly as the impressions are made, they are then released. And when you have no personal issues with them, impressions process freely. This is how the overall system of perception is meant to work. It's meant to take things in, allow you to experience them, and let them pass through so that you're fully present in the next moment. And while the system is in a working, operative state, you are fine, and it is fine. You're simply having experience after experience. Driving is an experience. Trees passing by are an experience, and cars passing are another experience. And these experiences are, gift, are gifts that were meant to be given to you, like a great movie. They are passing into you, awakening and stimulating you, and they are actually having a profound effect upon you. Moment after moment, experiences are coming in, and you're learning, and you're growing. Your heart and mind are expanding, and you're being touched in a very deep level. And if experience is the best teacher, there's nothing that comes close to the experience of life. What it means to live life is to experience the moment that is passing through you, and then experience the next moment, and then the next one. Many different experiences will come in and pass through you, and it's a phenomenal system when it is working properly. If you live in that state, you would be a fully aware being. That is how an awakened being lives in the now, and they are present. Life is present, and the wholeness of life is passing through them. Imagine if you were so fully present during each experience of life that it was touching you to the depth of your very being. Every moment would be stimulating, moving experience because you would be completely open and life would be flowing right through you. But that's not what happens inside most of us. Instead, it's more like you're driving down the street, here come the trees, here come the cars, and it's all passing right through you with no trouble. And then, inevitably, something comes into your mind that doesn't make it through. There was this one car, a light blue Ford Mustang. That looked like your girlfriend's car. But as it passed by, you noticed two people hugging in the front seat. At least it looked like they were hugging, and it sure looked like your girlfriend's car. But it was a car just like all the other cars, wasn't it? No. It wasn't just like all the other cars to you. So let's look carefully at what happened. Surely for the camera of the eyes, there's no difference between that car and the others. There's a light bouncing off the objects, passing through your retina, and making visual impressions on your mind. So at the physical level, nothing different is going on. But at the mental level, the impression didn't make it through. When the next moment comes, you are no longer notice the rest of the trees. You're not seeing the rest of the cars. Your heart and your mind are fixated on that one car. And even though it's gone, you've got yourself a problem here. There's a blockage, an event that got stuck. All the subsequent experiences are trying to pass through you, but something has happened inside that has left this past experience unfinished. What happens to that experience that didn't make it through? Specifically, what happens to that image of the girlfriend's car if it didn't just fade away into a deep memory, like everything else? At some point, you'll have to stop focusing on it in order to deal with something else, like the stoplight. What you don't realize is that your entire experience of life is about to change because of what didn't make it through you. Life must now compete with this blocked event for your attention. And the impression does not just sit there quietly. You will see that your tendency is to think about it constantly. This is all an attempt to find a way to process it through your mind. You didn't need to process the trees, but you need to process this. Because you resisted, it got stuck, and now you have a problem. You see the thoughts start up. Well, maybe it wasn't her. Of course it wasn't her. How could that possibly have been? Thought after thought goes on inside, and it drives you crazy in there. 
All that inner noise is just your attempt to process the blocked energy and get it out of the way. Long term, the energy patterns that cannot make it through you are pushed out to the forefront of the mind and held until you're prepared to release them. These energy patterns, which hold tremendous detail about the events associated with them, are very real. They don't just disappear, and when you are unable to allow life's events to pass through, the, pass through you, they stay inside and they become a problem. These patterns may be held within you for a very long time. And it's not easy to keep energy together in one place for long. As you willfully struggle to keep these events from passing through your consciousness, the energy first tries to release by manifesting through the mind. And this is why the mind becomes so active. When the energy can't make it through the mind because it conflicts with other thoughts and mental concepts, it, is then, it then tries to release through the heart. And that is what creates all the emotional activity. When you resist even that release, the energy gets packed up and forced to deep storage within the heart. And in the yogic tradition, that unfinished, the unfinished energy pattern is called a samskara. This is a Sanskrit word meaning impression. And in the yogic teachings, it is considered one of the most important influences affecting your life. A samskara is a blockage, an impression from the past. It's an unfinished energy pattern that ends up running your life. And in order to deal with this and understand this, let's first take in an in-depth look at the physics behind those blocked energy patterns. And just like energy waves, the energy that comes into you must keep moving, but that doesn't mean it can't get blocked within you. There is always a way that the energy can keep moving and stay in one place, and that is to circle around itself. And we see this in atoms and in planetary orbits. Everything is energy, and energy will just expand outward if it is not contained. For there to be a manifest creation, energy must get into the dynamic, the dynamic of cycling around itself to create a stable unit. That's why energy manifesting as an atom forms the basic building blocks of this entire physical universe. Energy circles and cycles around itself, and as we've discovered, atoms have enough harnessed energy to blow up the world, and when that energy is released. But unless forced otherwise, the energy will stay harnessed because of its equilibrium state. This process of cycling energy is exactly what happens with a samskara. A samskara is a cycle of stored past energy patterns in a state of relative equilibrium and it is your resistance to experiencing these patterns that causes the energy to keep cycling around itself. There is no other place for it to go, and you won't let it. And this is how most people process their issues. This packet of cycling energy is literally stored in your energetic heart center, and all the samskaras you have collected all of, through your whole life are stored there. To fully appreciate what this means, let's go back to the example of the light blue Mustang that looked like your girlfriend's car. Once the disturbed energy patterns are packaged and stored in the heart, they are basically inactive, and it may look to you like you've handled the situation and that you have no more issues with that experience. You may not even mention that, that event to your girlfriend because it would look like you were jealous. You didn't know what to do, so you resisted the energy, and it got stored back into the heart where it could fall into the background and not be bothersome. While it may seem like it's all done, like it's all over and gone, it really isn't. Every one of the samskaras that you've stored is still there. Everything that did not make it through you from the time you were a baby all the way to this moment is still inside of you. It is with these impressions, these samskaras, that encrust the valve of the spiritual heart and that encrustation builds up and restricts the energy flow. So now that we've understood where the blockages within the heart come from, we have answered the structural question of how the heart gets blocked. You can certainly see the potential for impressions to build up to the point where very little energy can make it through. And if they build up sufficiently, you will find yourself in a state of depression. And in that state, all becomes dark. It is this, it is this because very little energy is coming into your heart or your mind. And eventually, everything appears negative because the world of senses must pass through this depressed energy before it gets to your consciousness. But even if you aren't prone to depression, your heart still gets blocked over time and it just builds up. It doesn't always stay blocked, however. Depending upon life's experiences, it can open and close quite frequently. And this leads us to our next question. What is the cause of these frequent changes in the state of the heart? 
And if you watch carefully, you will see it is related to the same stored past impressions that caused the blockages in the first place. The stored energy patterns are real. A samskara is actually programmed with the specific details of the event that could not pass through. And if you experience jealousy because you thought you saw your girlfriend hugging someone in a car, very detailed data about that event is stored in that samskara. It has the event's vibration, it has that event's nature, and it even remains and retains your level of sensitivity about that event. To see this, let's watch what happened in the future. And it's five years later, and you're no longer with your old girlfriend. You've married actually someone else, and you're much more mature. One day, you're out driving along with the family, having a wonderful time. The trees are going by, the cars are going by, and then a light blue Mustang drives by with two people hugging in the front seat. Immediately, something changes in your heart. Your heart actually skips a beat. Then it starts beating faster. You start getting moody, irritated, and agitated. You aren't having such a nice day anymore. All of these interchanges occur because your heart got disturbed when you saw one particular car. It is truly amazing to step back and look at this process. Five years ago, for just a few moments, an event took place. You never discussed it with anybody. And now, five years later, a light blue Mustang drives by and it changes the energy flow through your heart and your mind. As unbelievable as this seems, it is true. And it's not only true about light blue Mustangs, it's true about everything that didn't make it through you. And no wonder we're overwhelmed. No wonder the heart keeps opening and closing. The energy that's stored there is real and it interacts with the flow of current thoughts and events. The dynamics of this interaction cause the vibrations that are stored as samskaras to get activated, and it's sometimes very many years later. This is what happened with the light blue Mustang, and understand, however, that it didn't even have to be the identical car to activate the stored energy. It could have been a black Mustang or any other car with people hugging. Anything in the neighborhood that the, has the potential to stimulate a samskara. The point is, is that past impressions do get stimulated, even old ones, and they affect your life. Sensory inputs from today's events dig through all the stuff you have stored through the years and they restore the exact past patterns associated with the incoming events. And when a samskara is stimulated, it opens like a flower and it begins to release the stored energy. And suddenly, flashes of what you experienced when the original event took place rush into your consciousness the thoughts, the feelings, sometimes even the smells, and other sensory input. The samskara can restore and store a complete snapshot of the event. It is way beyond any computer storage system created by human beings. It can archive everything you were feeling, everything you were thinking, and everything that was happening surrounding the event. All this information is stored into a tiny energy bubble in your heart. Years later, it gets stimulated, and you instantly are experiencing the feelings you felt in the past. You can actually feel the fears, you can feel the insecurity of a five-year-old when you're 60. What is happening is that unfinished mental and emotional energy patterns are getting stored and reactivated. But it's just as important to realize that most of what you take in does not get blocked. It makes it right through you. Imagine how many things you see all day, and they're not all stored like that. Of all of these impressions, the only ones that get blocked are those that cause either problems or some extraordinary sense of enjoyment. Yes, you store positive impressions too. When a powerful and wonderful experience happens to you, it doesn't make it through because you cling to it. And clinging means, I don't want this one to go away. He told me he loved me, and I felt so loved and protected. I want to keep that reliving that moment forever. Play it back for me over and over and over again and clinging creates positive samskaras. And when these are stimulated, they release positive energy. So hence, two kinds of experiences can occur that block the heart. You're either trying to push energies away because they bother you, or you're trying to keep energies close because you like them. And in both cases, you're not letting them pass. And you're wasting precious energy by blocking the flow through resisting or clinging. The alternative is to enjoy life instead of clinging to it or pushing it away. And if you can live like that, each moment will change you. If you are willing to experience the gift of life instead of fighting with it, you will be moved to the depth of your being. And when you reach this state, you will begin to see the secrets of the heart. The heart is a place through which energy flows to sustain you. This energy inspires you and it raises you. It is a strength that carries you through life 
and it's the beautiful experience of love that pours through your whole being. And this is meant to be going on inside you at all times. The highest state you have ever experienced is simply the result of how open you are. And if you don't close it, it can be like that all of the time. So don't sell yourself short. This can go on all the time, unending inspiration, unending love, and unending openness. And that is the natural state of a healthy heart. To achieve this state, simply allow the experiences of life to come in and pass through your being. And if old energies come up and back up because you are unable to process them before, let them go. Now, it's that easy. When that light blue Mustang drives by and you feel fear or jealousy, just smile. Be happy that the samskar, which has been stored down there for all this time, has the opportunity to make it through you. Just open, relax your heart, forgive, laugh, or do anything you want. Just don't push it back down. Of course it hurts when it comes up. It was stored with pain, and it's going to release with pain. It's going to make you feel very uncomfortable. But you have to decide if you want to continue to walk around with the stored pain, blocking your heart and limiting your life, and the alternative is to be willing to let it go when it gets stimulated. It only hurts for a minute, and then it's over. So you have a choice. Do you want to try to change the world so it doesn't disturb your samskaras, or are you willing to go through the process of purification? But don't make decisions based on stimulated blockages. Learn to be sensitive enough to, be, to just watch the stuff come up. And once you sit deeply enough inside to stop fighting the stored energy patterns, they'll come up constantly and pass right through you. They'll come up during the day, they'll come up even during your dreams. Your heart will become accustomed to the process of releasing and cleansing to just let it all happen. Get it over with and don't process, process them one by one. That's just way too slow. Stay centered behind them and let go. Just like the physical body purges bacteria and other foreign material, the natural flow of your energy will purge the stored patterns from your heart. Your reward is a permanently open heart. There is no more valve. You live in love and it feeds and strengthens you. And that is an open heart. That is the instrument of the, of the heart as it was meant to be. Allow yourself to experience every note the heart can play. And if you relax and release, this purification of your heart is a wonderful thing. Set your eyes on the highest state you can imagine and don't take them off. If you slip, just get back up. It doesn't matter. The very fact that you even want to go through this process of freeing the energy flow means you are great. You will get there. Just keep letting go. So that is the end of chapter six. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope that maybe it's motivated you in some very cool way to think about releasing all of these stored negative things that have happened to us in our life and to just let life just be and pass right through us. So anyways, you guys have a great day and um, hopefully you'll be tuning into my channel again very soon. Bye.